And so now we're going to use that property, we've sort of been going in reverse, to prove this. What were we saying about these two tangents? What were we suggesting about them? That they are equal, okay? So I'm going to suggest a construction will be really useful to prove that that is the case, that these two tangents are perpendicular, uh, sorry, not perpendicular, are equal. What's the stock standard construction that you always put in a circle when you don't know what else to do? The radius uh, it's from the center, right? Now in this case, I've got two points on the circumference, so therefore I'm going to draw both of the radii. Okay. Now, I'm going to start to piece together the proof to give you PA and PB. I'm going to give you one clue before I let you have a go on your own. I suggested that we would have to use this property, that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. Where, where can I put in these right angles? Where do they belong? If the center is O, which are the right angles? A, which? There are, there are two right angles in this diagram. Where are they? They've got names. What would you call them? P, P, B, O. Because P, B is a tangent and O, B is the radius at the point of contact. Do you agree? So they're perpendicular. Where's the other one? P, A, O. Ta-da. OK. Um, by the way, quick note. Think back to last week when we talked about um, cyclic quadrilaterals. See how this is 90 and this is 90? So what can you tell me about O, A, P, and B? What can you tell me about those points? If the opposite angles are both 90, the opposite angles are supplementary, what kinds of quadrilaterals have opposite angles that are supplementary? Do you remember? Cyclic quadrilaterals, we're in circles, right? Cyclic quadrilaterals uh, have opposite angles that are supplementary. So if you wanted to, you have this shape now, you could find the center of this and you could draw a circle that went through all of those four points. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a minute. I've given you some clues, given you quite a few, actually. How can you use this information to show that these two lengths are AP? What we're required to prove is that AP is equal to BP. Have a shot. If you've got something, call me over. <laughs> proved. Okay, proved inverted commas. All right, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you the proof that I originally intended, and then I'm, like, it's, I'm very interested. Um, both Justin and Raj, you both proved it a different way, the same different way. You've proved it the same way, uh, but it's not the way that I've proved it, which is cool. So let me show you how I would do it like this, okay? When I made this construction OP, I divided our quadrilateral up there into two triangles, and they're not just any two triangles. These two triangles, you can clearly see look congruent, don't they? So can I prove that that is the case? It's not that hard, okay? Have a look. You know how we constructed these radii, right? So the radii are clearly going to be equal, right? In addition to having equal radii, you also have these equal angles. But they're not just equal angles, they are right angled, right? They're right angled. And then lastly, the side I constructed in the middle, OP, is shared in common by both triangles, right? So in fact, this is an RHS proof. Do you see that? It's an RHS proof. Um, right angle, I've got the hypotenuse there because it's opposite the right angle, and then I've got a shorter side. So if they are congruent, then what? Yeah, then corresponding sides of congruent triangles are uh, equal, so you're done, okay? But you didn't have to prove it that way. Let's do it this way. Though I will say it takes a bit of, a tiny bit of finagling around, but it works, it's fine. Uh, so if you construct AB instead, Okay, um, correct me if I'm wrong as I go through this, I'm just doing it from your memory, okay? If you construct AB, then just like over here, you created not congruent triangles, but an isosceles triangle at least over here, right? Which means that if I call this guy, say, theta and this theta, because they're equal, right? I can now say on the other side, in this other triangle, because I know I've proven earlier that those are 90 degrees, what's this angle going to be equal to? It's the complement, yeah? 90 minus theta. And by the same logic, this is also the complement of theta. Well, if you've got two angles and they're both going to be the same, you've created a second isosceles triangle up here. Uh, equal sides are opposite equal angles. That's nice, isn't it? Maybe I like that better, actually, because you don't have to appeal to triangle congruence. Okay? So does that make sense? Do you want me to rehearse that last bit? Yeah, um, you can say base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal, but um, then to 
to, to state that, you have to precede that by proving that it's isosceles, which you don't need to do. You, you can just have them being equal angles. That's enough. Okay.